2015 was the year that introduced us to Undertale. Starting off as a project started by Toby Fox and his friend Temi Chang, it's now a massive game with a sequel in Deltarune and representation in Super Smash Bros. No one expected Undertale to become this popular. Hey guys, I'm Brad with 1UP Binge, and this is Undertale, Good to Evil. <laughs> With introductions out of the way, we can start off with the best characters on our list. These are the good. Earning our gold medal of good is Toriel. Toriel is the second major character you meet in any run of Undertale, and she's the caretaker of the ruins. She was once queen of the underground, but after the death of her children, she gave that up and hid in the ruins. Toriel is a perfect example of a good person and the closest the game has to an angel, technically. She saves the player from Flowey, gives them a cell phone, and houses the player, intending to protect them for a long time. She kind of clings to the player and doesn't want them to leave her home, but being alone so long does things to people, so we can't really blame her. In one neutral route ending, she becomes a loving queen once more to help the underground, and in the true pacifist ending, she seemingly adopts the player. Toriel's worst crime is caring too much, and she doesn't have a killer bone in her body, because she's mortified if she somehow kills you. Taking the silver medal of good is Papyrus. The great Papyrus, as he prefers to be called, is a skeleton and the younger but taller brother of Sans. Papyrus is a great guy in general. Sure, he gets angry at Sans for being lazy, but he's just trying to see his brother do what's best. Papyrus is a puzzle fan, making many puzzles for the player to go through. Initially, it seems like he's aiming to kill the player, but unlike any other character, upon defeating the player, he just captures them and locks them up for a moment, and after three times, just lets the player pass. Papyrus is very nice and really just wants friends and to be in the Royal Guard, even if they do hunt humans, but he doesn't seem like the type to harm anyone, let alone a human child. The bronze medal of good goes to Burger Pants. Burger Pants is a late game secondary character who's the vendor at the MTT Resort. In general, Burger Pants is a nice guy who just absolutely hates his job. He's shown to be heavily stressed out but still uncaring towards his job, even enough not to run in the genocide route. Burger Pants deserves more than what he's given and he's willing to listen to the player, even if it bores him half to death. Burger Pants is a great guy for the most part, hence why we rank him here on our list. Next is the ghostly DJ Napstabluke. Naps the Bluke is a ghost and the cousin of Metaton. He's an aspiring DJ and musician, and is a nice guy, all told. When the player faces off against him, Naps the Bluke will lower his HP, but doesn't take any actual damage due to being incorporeal. He even saves the player from the mad dummy during their fight late in the game and tries to befriend the player. Naps the Bluke's also a shy person who pretends to be asleep when the player first comes around, but all in all, Naps the Bluke is a really nice guy, no matter how you slice it. Next on the list is Monster Kid. Monster Kid is exactly what it says on the tin. They are a child the player finds in the underground. They also seem downright obsessed with Undyne and the Royal Guard. This leads to him doing many dumb things to try and meet Undyne, not even realizing that the player is human. Monster Kid falls in the trap of being just a kid and not understanding the world around them as much as he should, and if it wasn't for the fact that they were so young, Monster Kid may fall lower. As it stands, they're a good kid. Next is Undyne. Captain of the Royal Guard and the Underground's fiercest warrior, Undyne is someone who takes her job very seriously. She chases the player throughout Waterfall, trying to capture and or kill them, as is her job. Undyne ends up fighting the player, and if they save her, she tries her best to make friends with the player. However, she's a fighter in spirit, and even if you become friends with her, she'll fight you day in and day out, because she just absolutely loves fighting. She also ends up dating Alfies by the end of the game because they get along really well, especially considering their major differences. Undyne tries consistently to kill the player, but you can't really blame her when not only is it her job, but she was raised to believe it would help monster kind. During the genocide route, she risks her life to save Monster Kid and then uses all her might to kill the rampaging player. She can't fall any lower because, all in all, she's just doing what's right. Ending off the good section is Sans. Sans is the most memed on character in Undertale and has become highly popular on the internet. Sans is a lazy skeleton and the older brother of Papyrus, who's closely related to the Royal Guards like Papyrus is. 
He appears consistently after the player enters Snowden for the first time, where he teleports around and surprises the player. He's known for his jokes and puns, and all of his inane japes. However, while he says the only reason he doesn't kill the player is his promise to Toriel, it's shown that he doesn't usually hold any hatred towards the player. However, he's one of the few characters who are acutely aware of how many times a player resets the game, dies, or anything of that nature. Sans doesn't show his full hand until the genocide run, in which he is the final boss. During this run, he's definitively stronger than you, the player, as he holds the final hope of the underground and is the literal harbinger of karmic justice. Now, despite trying to slay the pure evil that is the player in a genocide run, he doesn't really boot up his full power unless you've literally killed everyone else. You could leave one Vulcan alive or just Jerry and he won't kill you. Instead, he'll call you evil and let you pass. Sans would rank higher if he acted up more often, but obviously, that wasn't the case. With our good guys out of the way, we need to talk about the true neutrals. This is the gray area. Starting off the gray area is Toby Fox. Now, don't be confused. By Toby Fox, we mean the annoying dog, that white little rascal that wanders throughout the game. It's confirmed that the annoying dog is a representation of the creator, Toby Fox, and throughout the game, he really lives up to his moniker of annoying dog. Most of his appearances are him just taking things like Papyrus's devastating final attack or just being there for moral and emotional support. It's implied that the dog may be godlike in some ways, at least in the Deltarune universe, and is a creator of some kind. If he had more substantial appearances, he may rank somewhere on this list. Next is the player, Frisk. The player ranks dead center in our list for a good reason. This is the only character whose actions are completely dependent on the person playing the game. While we only learn the name of Frisk in the true pacifist run, they are still beholden to the player in every run. With the game having three major routes one can take, Frisk's entire personality shifts between which version you're playing. The neutral route features the most amount of differences per player, because who lives and dies is completely up to the player. So we'll focus on the two main routes. The true pacifist run version of Frisk is an angel in human flesh, friends with everyone, and a lovable character who sometimes flirts a bit too much. Meanwhile, in the genocide run, Frisk murders hundreds of monsters, including some of the most recognizable and likable characters in the game, becoming, ironically, a monster themselves, but in the figurative sense. Sure, some fan theories claim that Frisk is possessed in that run, but as far as we're concerned, the player is the one responsible for everything, and therefore ranks here dead center. Next on our list is Chara. Now put away your torches and pitchforks and let me explain this. Chara is the first human who fell into the underground after it was sealed off, and is by far the most controversial character to rank. Chara fell into the underground and was adopted by the Dreamers, where they grew up quite happy with their new brother and family. They died long before the actual events of the game, but we see plenty of their story, how they got sick and died and accidentally led to the death of Asriel in return. Chara apparently tries to kill all the humans attacking Asriel, but that can be seen as self-defense to protect their brother. Now, the main problem comes from the genocide route, where allegedly, Chara is awoken by the player and may or may not possess them, because Flowey concludes the protagonist may be Chara, but the player and Chara look very similar regardless. At the end of the genocide route, Chara appears physically, and they try to erase the world, but one can make an argument the player corrupts them with their determination. It's highly difficult to rank them, so we place them here because this is as close to the center of the list as possible. Next is Mad Dummy. The Mad Dummy is not a hard character to understand. He's a ghost that is possessing a battered training dummy. He's irrationally angry no matter what the player does during the game or to his cousins. Now, according to the genocide route, it's because he's not fused with his dummy body and therefore angry enough to try to kill the player. However, his anger is definitely aimed towards the wrong person, and in the genocide route, he becomes a glad dummy by fully fusing with the dummy. In the Nintendo Switch versions, the ghost takes over a Mew Mew doll and becomes Mad Mew Mew, but there's not really much story to talk there. His anger is the main issue, and if he directed it at the right place, he wouldn't fall this low. Finishing the gray area is Spider Queen, Muffet. 
Muffet is a character who the player meets late in the game and appears to be the leader of the spiders in the underground. She runs a rather expensive bake sale and leaves the spiders, trapping the player because she believes they hate spiders. If the player bought from the spider bake sale, she will let you free because she knows that means you don't hate them. However, if you buy an item prior to her fight, she will thank you instead of fighting you. Her whole thing revolves around money and being sort of racist by saying humans hate spiders so she should kill you. But at the very least, she will apologize and accept the truth if it comes to light. Now time for the worst of the worst. These are the bad to evil. Starting off the bad to evil section is Metaton. Metaton is the underground's most famous and only TV star. Metaton is consistently trying to kill the player in a high array of ways, from explosives to chainsaws and everything in between. But each time, he stops where he can land the final blow, because he does almost everything for his viewers. The player then ends up flipping a switch, and he ends up fighting them once more on live television in his EX form. Now, Metaton is in the bad mostly because he doesn't really have many reasons to slay the player beyond views, viewers, and publicity. However, it is important to note that he was programmed to do these things by Alfies, so that he could save the player whilst they're in danger. However, despite this, we can't force him to fall anywhere else, because at the end of the day, he falls here because someone needs to. Next is Azrael Dreamer, Prince of the Underground and son of Toriel and Asgore, Asriel died long before the events of the game. He became very attached to the first human to fall in the underground, Chara, becoming their best friend and brother. When Chara died, Asriel fused with their soul and tried to take them to their village to rest. This leads to his death because while Chara wished to kill them all, he instead didn't want to. And while on the surface, this leads many to believe he would rank higher, there is one major caveat. Even though we're splitting up Asriel and Floey, and the true passive his run, Asriel steals all the souls of every creature in the underground and then tries to kill the player, even after he believes them to be a sibling Chara. He becomes the god of hyperdeath and intends to destroy the universe and reset it back from the beginning to have a happy ending. He doesn't fall in the bottom three because he's still a child at heart and as such doesn't know what's best. But that doesn't mean he wasn't planning to destroy the universe and should be ranked as such. The bronze medal of evil goes to Alphys. Now, Alfie's initially doesn't seem so bad, kind of nerdy and embarrassed, and even quite helpful at first. However, we learn very quickly that this is not the case. She has dozens of cameras all over the underground that she uses to essentially stalk the player and maybe even spy on inhabitants in Undyne. She's the head scientist to the king and builds and creates things for him, such as Metaton. She forced Metaton to create obstacles for the player so that she could be portrayed as a hero by helping them. But her true colors and terrible past are fully revealed in the true pacifist run. After going on a very cute date with Undyne, she lets you explore the true lab. A dark and dreary place where Alfie started experimenting on human determination. This led to the hard creation of the Amalgamates, creatures created by fusing dying monsters together. It's assumed that she'd be hiding this for a while and only comes out with the info once the player finds out, meaning she would likely hide it for the rest of her life. Alfie's is not inherently evil, and we can blame these experiments on Asgore to some degree, because he's the one who ordered it. But she still needs to rank here because of the hiding, the spying, and the near murderous intent. The silver medal of evil goes to Asgore Dreamer, the king of the underground. Asgore was Toriel's ex-husband and the current king of the underground, who was trying to break open the barrier so that monsters could go amongst the humans. Now, initially, he didn't want to do this until the death of his children, and while the fandom has brought up other ways he could have done this, we're not going to get into those. Asgore became a ruler that is feared by many, especially humans, killing any human who comes around and taking their souls so he can destroy the barrier. The problem here is that while he does this, he's doing it for what he believes is the good of his people, even though breaking the barrier would likely result in war. He doesn't even seem like that bad of a guy, but despite his good intentions, he tries to kill the player, even destroying their mercy button, so there's one outcome to the duel, because, as it's always said, the road to hell is paved in good intentions. To no one's surprise, grabbing the gold medal of evil is Flowey. Flowey is the first character the player meets in the game. In fact, you meet Flowey within the first few steps. Flowey tries to play it off as a fun and cute flower that would never hurt you, introduces you to the game's mechanics, and then tries to murder you. Flowey throughout the game is stalking you, trying to find your weakness, and taunting you the whole way, consistently trying to kill you, especially at the end of the game where he turns into Omega Flowey and kills you over and over again for fun, mostly. 
Flowey is leagues ahead of Asgore in terms of evil intent, because Flowey kills for fun and for his own purposes, and at least Asgore is trying to do the right thing by saving his people. Alright guys, before we go, we still have our lovely Sinner medals to give out, and here they are. Grabbing our Darwin medal for dumbest character is Monster Kid, who doesn't realize a player is a human or that Undyne is hunting them down, mostly just wanting to see her. We're giving the Envy medal to Monster Kid, who gets intensely envious from the attention that the player gets from Undyne. Taking our Sloth medal is Sans for very obvious reasons. Sans is constantly sleeping, resting, or other such things simply because he can. Sans also takes our Gluttony medal for similar but different reasons. When he's not sleeping, Sans is constantly related to food, whether it's selling hot dogs or drinking ketchup. The greed medal goes to Muffet, who is money hungry and will stop fighting you if you pay her. Taking our pride medal is Papyrus. Papyrus is very prideful and calls themselves the Great Papyrus, showing a bit of an inflated ego. Finally, bagging the wrath medal is Mad Dummy, because don't lie, it's in the name, he's the Mad Dummy. Alright guys, that is the list. Let us know in the comment section if you agree with our ranking and tell us what we should cover next. If you need a one-up, hit that notification bell and binge our Good to Evil playlist, where we break down the morality of the characters in your favorite games. Thanks for watching.